Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to make a gender neutral pair of shorts. This pattern comes in a variety of sizes ranging from below 30 up to past 40, making it easy to dial in your exact size and fit style. This pattern is on the easier side and I'm going to be walking you through each step. So if you are new to sewing, you should have no problem following the easy step-by-step -step tutorial. With all that being said, don't forget to grab the PDF pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you need two yards for your main fabric, and this can be pretty much any style fabric. You can use a denim, canvas, twill, athletic materials, Sherpa, sweatshirt fleece. Since we're gonna be making an elastic waistband, you can use stretch or non-stretch fabric. I'm actually gonna be using a very stretchy style of Sherpa, and I'll be pairing that with the non-stretch upholstery fabric for the pockets. So get creative with it, use whatever fabric, test it out, and let me know how it goes. You'll need one and a quarter yards for the secondary fabric, and this is gonna be for the lining so I recommend using a lighter weight fabric because when you bring all these fabrics together if you're using bulkier fabrics it becomes a little bit harder to sew so just use something lighter weight breathable a mesh works or even a lightweight jersey you'll need one to two yards of cord and this is going to be used for the drawstring and any style of cord will work I recommend going a little bit longer and you can always cut it back once you found that perfect size you'll need one yard of elastic band and I recommend using anywhere from half inch up to an inch width this is going to be used for the waistband. If you want to go wider than one inch, you're going to have to adjust the stitch guide on the pattern. It's very easy to do and I'll show you that once we get started. You'll need two eyelets and you can use any size eyelet. I'm going to be using a quarter inch. They're on the smaller side, but it works great for this project. Lastly, you'll need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is download it, print it off, tape it together, and you're ready to go. Before you start taping it together, the best thing to do is to cut off the top and one of the side edges. This is going to allow you to overlap the pages for a perfectly aligned pattern. And once you have all your supplies gathered and your pattern printed out, it's time to move into cutting. And after taping your pattern together, it should look like this. Be sure to check your printer alignment for the best possible results. This pattern comes in multiple sizes and you can also customize it to your exact measurements. Using the pattern, find the size that works best for you, or you can use the waist and hip measurements. Keep in mind the waist and hip measurements are going to appear to be a little bit longer. This is because we're using elastic in the waistband. So it's going to pull that waistband closed, making it a smaller size. This can be adjusted in later steps, so if you're not certain about the size, you should go one size bigger. Or if one size up is way too big, you can actually go in between the sizes for a more precise outcome. Since everyone is shaped a little bit different, it's hard to get that perfect fit the first try, but using your measurements and matching it up with the pattern will give you the best results. This second thing to keep in mind is the length. If you want a longer one, you're going to want to go all the way down to the bottom, but if you want shorter, you're going to cut midway. If you're not certain, I recommend cutting it longer and you can always scale it back after you have them all together before you hem the bottom edge. Anyways, once you figured out the size you want, we're going to cut on the outside of the black or dotted line. After cutting, you should end up with two to four front pocket flap panels cut out of your main fabric. This is optional. If you don't want to add the flaps to the pockets, you don't need this panel. One to two front pocket panels. Again, this is optional depending on if you want to add a front pocket. Two back pocket panels cut out of your main fabric. Four pocket panels cut out of your secondary fabric. Two waistband panels cut out of your main fabric. And remember to cut this one on the fold. Four back main panels, two cut out of your secondary fabric, and two cut out of your main fabric. And lastly, four front main panels, two cut out of your secondary fabric, and two cut out of your main fabric. Moving on to construction, we're going to start by grabbing the front pocket panel. And again, this is optional, so if you don't want to add the front pocket panels, you can skip this step. And you can also add one or two front pocket panels. The first thing we're going to do is hem the top edge. Using the pattern as a guide, we're going to roll the edge over twice. Depending on the type of fabric you're using, the best thing to do is press it down. Flip the fabric over to the right side and add two top stitches along the top edge. And you can add a decorative stitch or any style of stitch if you want to give that edge more detail. Using the pattern, locate the quarter inch seam allowance around the outside, and we're going to fold that edge in a quarter inch starting at the bottom. And press each edge after folding. We're trying to make this as neat as possible because any little defects will show up on the pants. If you're using fabric that doesn't press so well, the best thing to do is pin the outside edge. With the panel pinned and pressed, it's ready to go, but for now we can move it off to the side and grab our back pocket panels. And the reason we're grabbing these is because we're doing the exact same thing, so we might as well do it at the same time as the front pocket panel. So just repeat the previous steps, hem the top edge by folding it over twice and pressing it down. After pressing, flip it over to the right side, add two stitches along the top edge. Do this for both of the back pocket panels. 
Using the pattern, locate the seam allowance around the outside. And just like with the front panel, we're gonna pin or press the outside edges to a quarter inch seam allowance. With all the pocket panels ready, we can place these off to the side and grab our front main panels. We won't be needing all the panels, so we can place the two secondary fabric panels off to the side and one of our main fabric panels off to the side. Unless you're adding front pockets to both of the front main panels. But for now, I'm gonna place one off to the side. Using the pattern, we're gonna locate the front pocket placement guide and you can place it anywhere within that placement guide. Locate the inside edge that corresponds with the size pattern you're using. A simple way to do this is just roll that edge over, place the pocket underneath, and kind of line it up by seeing it through the paper. You're going to want to pin it down, and at this point you can kind of fine tune it and really get it nice squared up around the outside edge. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around the outside edge, leaving the top edge unstitched. Be sure to add a nice tack stitch at the start and end point of the stitch so that pocket doesn't rip off when you use it. Also, when it comes to the placement, you can realistically place it anywhere on this panel as long as you're inside a quarter inch from any of the outside edges. At the moment, we can place this panel off to the side and grab our back main panels. Just like with the front main panels, we can place the secondary panels off to the side. Since we're adding two back pockets, we're going to need both of the main fabric panels. Lay the panels out with right sides facing up. Using the pattern, we're going to find the back pocket placement guide, grab both of our back pocket panels, and place the pocket panels within the placement guides. And you can place it anywhere within that placement guide. And the big thing to keep in mind is that you want these to be lined up at the top and bottom as good as possible. Any little offset is very noticeable. With the pocket in the correct position, we're going to roll the outside edges over and pin it down to the back main panel. Repeat this process for the opposite pocket panel and stitch around the outside edge, leaving the top edge unstitched. Just like with the front pocket panel, it's best to start and stop with a nice tack stitch. This will prevent the pockets from ripping off when you're using them. And real quick before we move on, you can customize these pockets to any style you want. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you don't need to add them at all if you don't want to. You can also place them pretty much anywhere on those panels, but for now we're going to place these panels off to the side and grab our front pocket flat panels. And this step is optional, if you don't want to add a flap to the front pocket, you can skip ahead. Separate the panels and place the right sides together. Locate the quarter inch seam allowance on the pattern and that's where we're going to be stitching. Remember, we're not stitching that top edge, just the outside bottom edge. After finishing up the stitch, double check to make sure all the layers got stitched together and we're going to flip the right sides out. If you're using a bulky fabric, I recommend trimming the corners to reduce a little bit of that bulk. Next, we're going to add a top stitch to the outside edge, so line the two layers up as good as possible. I'm using an edge presser foot to help reduce any imperfections. If you're using fabric similar to mine, it's hard to see the top stitch, but you can really see that it brings those layers together. From here, we're going to grab the front main panel, and it's going to be the main fabric panel with the pocket attached. Line the front flat panel up with the top edge of the front pocket. I find it's easiest to line up the centers and then we're going to flip the flat panel straight up and stitch the bottom edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to flip the flat panel back down and kind of check the alignment, make sure it's good. If everything is looking good, we're going to add a top stitch on that top edge. And this stitch is really going to hold that flat panel down, but you still are going to want to add a button at some point. We're going to be adding it at the end and you can add any style of button, whether it's a magnetic snap or just a regular snap. But for the meantime, we're going to slide this panel to the side and grab our pocket panels. Going along with the pocket panels, we'll need our main fabric front main panels. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the attachment guide on both the front main panel and the pocket panel. Since we only have two of the front main panels, we can place two of the pocket panels off to the side because those are for the back panels. Place the right side together, lining up the outside edge and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to flip the panels open so the wrong sides are together, lining up the outside edge of both of the panels. And to prevent the pocket from kind of flapping out, we're going to add a top stitch along that pocket edge. This will secure the pocket to the inside and also give a nice clean look on the outside. And feel free to add more than just one top stitch. And from here, we can place these panels off to the side and grab both of the back main panels. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing. So we can separate the panels with right sides facing up, grab the remaining two pocket panels, locate the attachment guide on the panel, place the right sides together, and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like in the previous step, we're going to flip the pocket panels around to the back so the wrong sides are together. Line the pocket edge layers up as even as possible, place a few pins, and add a top stitch. And a quick tip, using a thread color that matches your fabric color will also help hide any imperfections. Moving on to the next step, we're going to separate both of these panels, open up the pocket panel so the right side's facing up, 
Place the front main panels directly over top with right sides together. Move the panels around so the pocket panels and the outside edges line up and from here we're going to stitch that outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance starting at the top, continuing around the pocket and down to the bottom edge. This step is a little bit more tricky so take your time and definitely use pins to keep those layers lined up. And don't worry, these raw edges will be hidden on the inside of the lining. But anyways, moving on, we're going to open up the panel so the right side is facing up, locate the seam, and we're going to roll that seam allowance over towards the front or the back panel and add a top stitch. And remember, we're stitching directly on top of that seam allowance. And it's a little bit hard to see with the fabric I'm using, but essentially we're just giving that edge a little bit more definition and structure. Place one of the panels off to the side, move to the top edge. We don't want the pocket panel to be flapping around, so we're going to fold it so it's laying under the front main panel. With it laying flat, we're going to stitch as close as we can to the outside edge, locking both of those panels together. Repeat this process for the opposite pocket assembly. Next, we're going to fold the panel in half with the right sides together, line up the bottom inseam, and we're going to add a stitch to that inseam at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to quickly check to make sure all the layers are even. If everything is looking good, we're going to flip the panel to the right side, locate the seam allowance on the inseam, fold the seam allowance to the right or the left, and add a top stitch. And depending on which direction you fold the seam allowance, you're going to want to do it in the same direction for the opposite assembly. These seams take a lot of stress over time, so adding these top stitches gives it more durability. Flip one of the panels so the wrong side is facing out, and we're going to place the opposite panel on the inside with right sides together, lining up the curved edge. And to get it lined up, it helps to use the inseam at the bottom and the top edge. Once you have it lined up, it helps to place a few pins, and we're going to stitch that edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. This stitch can be a little bit tricky, so take your time. After finishing up, quickly double check, make sure all the layers got stitched together. If everything is looking good, we're going to flip the right sides out, and you can finally start to see the shape of the shorts come together. Just like in the previous steps, we're going to locate that seam allowance, fold it to the right or the left, and add a top stitch all the way around that new seam. It can be a little bit tricky when you get to that center point, so just take your time. Just like with the inseam, it's going to add strength and durability to that seam because this seam does take a lot of wear and tear. The next stitch is optional, it's more for looks. I'm not going to be adding it to this one because you can't really see it, but it's adding the fly stitch and you can realistically add this in any shape along that front seam opposite of the front pocket. Typically it'll be straight down going about 7 inches and curve into the seam. And I'll quickly show you how easy it is to do. You just stitch down, curve in, and you can add one or two stitches, but obviously you can't see it on my fabric. And with this style of shorts, it's more for looks anyways. But anyways, that's going to complete the outer layer of the shorts, so we can place this assembly off to the side and grab the front and back main panels. Keep in mind we only have secondary fabric left. Start by placing the right side together, lining up the outside edge opposite of the curve, and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're essentially going to be repeating the process that we did for the main fabric, but we're not going to be adding top stitching or the pockets. Move down to the inseam, line up the edges, and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. You can add top stitching if you want to for that extra detail on the inside of the shorts, but it's not totally necessary. Next, we're going to sew the curved edge, so we're going to flip the right sides out for one of the assemblies. Place it on the inside with right sides together, lining up the bottom inseam and the top edge. Place a few pins and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing up the stitch, double check, make sure all the layers are lined up and looking good. Flip the right sides out with the lining assembly assembly complete, we can place it off to the side and grab our waistband panel. Unfold the panels, place one off to the side, flip it around to the right side. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the eyelet placement guide. Mark out the eyelets on both sides of the fold. I'm using smaller eyelets. You can pretty much use any size eyelet as long as it fits within that elastic boundary. Since my fabric is super stretchy and loosely woven, I'm going to be using an interfacing to help back that eyelet. This will help prevent the eyelet from just popping out of the fabric once you install it. And pretty much any medium weight or heavy weight interfacing will work perfectly. Place it on the back side of the waistband. Feed the eyelet through the main fabric and the interfacing layer. Grab the back side of the eyelet. These eyelets come with a little plastic o-ring. And that's going to act as another level of security. Feed it onto the back side of the eyelet. I'm going to be using a hammer die to install these. This typically comes with the eyelets when you buy them. It's very easy to use. All you do is place the back or the front in the bottom portion of the die and hammer it into place. Using the same procedures, add your second eyelet. With both eyelets in, we're going to grab the opposite waistband panel, place the right sides together, and stitch the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. But don't sew all the way through on one edge. You want to leave a one inch gap so you can feed the elastic through from the side. 
If you're using wider elastic, then make the gap a little bit wider. Just to clarify, we left the gap directly in the center of the elastic drawstring guide. Fold the wrong side together, lining up the bottom edge. Using the pattern, we're going to place it directly on the eyelet and find the elastic and drawstring guide. And this is where we're going to add a stitch. It's going to create a little loop for the elastic to funnel through, and it's going to be on each side of the eyelet. And remember, we're sewing all the way around the waistband. Try to keep this as even as possible, so that way when you slide your elastic into that loop, it fits correctly. If you do have a lot of stretch within your fabric, be sure to use a zigzag stitch or even a cover stitch sewing machine. But for now, we can place the waistband assembly off to the side and grab both of our lining and main fabric panels. We're going to be placing the lining on the inside of the main fabric panel. But before we do that, we're going to have to trim the bottom edge of the lining, so flip it so the wrong side is facing out. And what I mean is when we hem up the bottom opening, we're going to be rolling it in on itself. And by doing that, we're going to be losing a couple inches on that roll. So we want to trim that lining to match that roll. This will allow us to roll the main fabric directly over the secondary fabric. So to be safe, it's best to take off just a half inch at the bottom of the lining to start. And we're going to do the same exact thing to the opposite side. So just a quick recap, we're hemming the bottom edge of the main fabric a half an inch, so we're cutting a half inch off the lining. It's a little confusing, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to throw the lining on the inside of the pants, line up the top edge, and as you can see, the lining only falls half inch away from the bottom edge. We're going to roll that bottom edge over up above the lining. The lining should run up right to the bottom of that roll and it's going to reduce the bunching and balking in the end. Moving on to the next step, we're going to be adding the waistband panel so we want to separate both of the assemblies. Grab the waistband panel and we want to line the eyelets up directly with the center seam on the main fabric panels. And this is on the front side of the front panel assemblies. Make sure the lining panel is inside out and we're going to place it directly over top, lining up the center seam for both of the front and back panels. And the right side of the lining should be up against the waistband. And in the end, you should have a waistband sandwich in between both of the panels with right sides together. To keep everything lined up, use the center and side seams. And from here, we're going to stitch all the way around that outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Take your time. You want to keep this stitch as even as possible. This raw edge will be hidden once we flip the right sides out. But if you want to surge it, you can. The main fabric from the inside, pull the right sides out. Do a quick look all the way around the outside edge. Make sure all the layers got stitched together. If everything is looking good, we're going to move on to the next step, and that's adding a top stitch along that seam. Pull all the layers down so they're even and add your top stitch. This step is optional. If you don't want to add the top stitch, you don't have to. Just like before, if your fabric is very stretchy, I recommend using a zigzag stitch or a cover stitch machine. Next, we're going to move to the leg opening, pull the lining down as far as possible, roll the main fabric over the lining. If the lining is bunching a little bit, you can roll up the main fabric and trim off what you need. It's also a good idea to quickly try these on because at this point you can still adjust the length and this is the perfect time to do it before we seal off the bottom ends. If you're happy with the length, we're going to roll that main fabric over the lining, pin it down. Remember, we want to hide the raw edge of the main fabric, so try to roll it over twice before you pin it down. Repeat the step for the opposite leg opening. When it comes to smaller openings like this, it's best to pull out the bottom on your sewing machine to turn it into a post bed. This will give you a little bit of room to work with and allow you to sew in a loop. And this is just the standard way of sewing the bottom edge. You can do it a different way. You can roll it up and sew it. If you want more of a rolled look or you can roll it towards the inside, there's a lot of different ways you can sew this and style it. At this point, it's a good idea to try them on, see if it's the right length. If everything is fitting good, we're going to move up to the opening on the waistband. Grab your half inch to one inch elastic band. And you can pretty much use any style of elastic. It's really based on how strong you want it. And all you have to do is feed it into the opening and all the way around the outside of the waistband. I find using a safety pin or a paper clip helps kind of feed it through so you can have something to hold on to and push it through that loop. Once you get the opposite end through, you're going to want to adjust the elastic to the size you want. The less elastic you have, the more it's going to cinch together. Trim the elastic to your desired size and give yourself about a half inch to overlap. Take it to the sewing machine and stitch that overlap back and forth quite a few times. After stitching, pull it a few times to make sure it's super secure. And then we're going to push the rest of that elastic to the inside of the opening. We don't want to seal off the opening just yet because we're going to use this opening to feed through our drawstring. If you're not adding drawstring, you can hand stitch the opening closed. Move over to the eyelets, grab your cord or drawstring. I'm using just a standard paracord. I like using this stuff. It's really strong and durable. And it's easy to seal the ends after cutting. Typically, you feed it through the eyelets, but these eyelets are super small. So I'm going to go back to the opening and feed my cord through the opening. Just like with the elastic, it helps to use a safety pin to kind of guide it through that loop. 
It does take a little time, but eventually you will get it there. We'll come back and finish off the cord ends, but for now we're going to move to the opening and seal it closed by hand stitching. And the reason we're doing this because we don't want to sew over the cord or the elastic. So using a hand stitch technique, you can kind of add a blind stitch to seal it closed. And after sealing it off, move back over to the cord. And I found a fun way to clean up the cord is adding cord ends. It's a nice detail that really makes your shorts look professionally made. They're also really easy to install. All you have to do is feed the cord through the opening, tie a knot, and pull the cord end over the knot. The tighter you pull it over the knot, the more secure it will be. If there's any excess cord hanging out the bottom, you can either snip it or burn it off. These come in a variety of styles, so find something that's going to work best with your project. And lastly, the final, final step is adding your branding. I typically use leather tabs installed with double side rivets. It's a quick and cost effective way to brand and you can add them all around your project. I also added a magnetic snap on the pocket flap. It's a great way to go and it makes it really easy to use the pocket. And there you have it, your shorts are complete. Hopefully yours turned out great. This is something you kind of want to fine tune. It's a foundation pattern that you want to dial into your exact size or style and fit. And you can make all that happen with this one pattern. So if it's not the exact look you're going for, just keep in mind you can just fine tune this and make it exactly how you want it. And I'd like to see how your projects turn out, so tag me on Instagram at Clothing. But until then, I'm going to keep the projects coming at you, so I'll see you next time. Thank you.